Um, so as we discuss the early theories of uh, media effects, let's move on to something more sophisticated, and that would be agenda setting and framing. In the first part of our lecture, we discussed this immediate effect uh, from the magic bullet theory, and then we discussed the roles of people or institutions who appear and shape our perspective and actually shape what will we see and what will we uh, get from the news. So agenda setting theory introduced first by Macaulay and Sean uh, basically speaks about mass media having this very powerful effect. So uh, media does not tell us what to think, rather it tells us what to think about. Maybe we can recall to the role of the gatekeeper who decides what kind of information would appear in the news here. But before McCombs and Sean, it was widely held that media and news coverage mainly reflects public interest, covering issues which were the most interesting for the audience. So uh, if we are there and if uh, some newspaper is telling about our president's dog, we must be really interesting and we are looking for more information about the dog of our president. Uh, but yet this idea of uh, media agenda kind of reflecting the interests of the public was disproved when scholars found out that media does have, certainly does have their own agenda. And the best uh, here is to refer to this quote. Uh, so it's not what to think, but what to think about. But how did it happen and how did this research happen? Uh, well, it was all based on the research on presidential elections, which uh, happened in uh, 1968, 72, and then followed by uh, 76. Uh, scholars developed two criteria, the length and the position of the news story in the media. Well, it would be newspaper, probably, as we speak about length and position, and the similarity of agenda uh, with the voters' perceptions. So basically, they would go through all the media, uh, all the newspapers that were would talk about the elections and then talk to people and ask them mm, what, what, what is important, what is uh, important happening in this country and uh, what is important for you as an individual. Their finding supported the uh, initial hypothesis of correlation between what voters think and what is important, uh, like what, what voters think is important and what media highlights in uh, their coverage. Still, here uh, we speak about correlation. So the correlation happens that uh, two variables, they change together. So uh, if A raises, then B raises, or if A raises, B decreases. Uh, so they just change together in accordance with each other. But it does not provide an understanding or it does not speak about uh, the causal influence. So it doesn't mean that media does affect people. Well, they just figure out that, yes, um, it's somehow reflecting the reality. The major assumptions of uh, agenda setting theory is the first. Media does not reflect the reality, but it rather filters and shapes it. So it's not what voters probably want to think or it's not what voters are interested in. It's rather what they've been told to think or not, not to think, but what, what to be interested in. The second point of agenda setting theory is that media uh, focuses their attention on some very particular issues. Uh, and this is an agenda for events that should be seen as important. Um, so after all, uh, we can move on to some types of agenda setting. So who are those influentials and where does it appear? Well, it can be public agenda setting. So it refers to the issues which are portrayed in the media and uh, the public's priorities. Then secondly, it can be media agenda setting. Uh, well, all the past, such as uh, institutional roles and the processes uh, that are influential within the selection of issues and content covered in the media. Uh, so basically, these are the gatekeepers. And the uh, third level would be policy agenda setting, uh, the media coverage and its influence on the legislative agenda and the policy making budding, etc. So we figure it out. Uh, media can be influential and it does set us a certain focusing point, uh, which we would like to see more precisely. And finally, we will just assume that they're more important uh, than the rest. But 
how and who is the most uh, most affected. Scholars come up with uh, two terms. Uh, it can be called the need for orientation or the index of curiosity. Uh, they say that people with high relevance and high uncertainty uh, at the highest level of uh, the need for orientation are the, those who will be most likely exposing themselves to the media and adopt uh, the media issue agenda. So if I do um, not have enough information and I really need to figure out what's going on, or if I am very much interested in this topic, well, I would get more affected. Well, it doesn't mean that we have to stay unpresent and not to be interested in anything. It just means that we need to apply some, some critical thinking and take a look, for example, at international agenda, because local agenda usually focuses on some issues which are important right, for the local community. Uh, but maybe something else is going on at the same time, but it was just avoided. It was just avoided and cut by the editor of the newspaper or uh, the editor from the TV channel uh, from the broadcasting. And these people would decide that it's not relevant and you should not think about it and you should not think that this is important. So this is agenda setting. Later on, uh, the story was developing and another theory comes out and this is framing. You might be a little bit familiar with framing, which is sometimes called the second level agenda setting. And here, when it comes to this theory, uh, we say that media not only influence what we think about, but it still does influence the way we think about different topics. So why is it second level, um, uh, second level agenda setting? So first, um, the influentials, uh, the editors in our case of uh, spreading the news, uh, would set uh, the agenda so they would select particular issues. But how else they can play with uh, what's going on uh, in their media coverage? Well, the transfer of a salience of an attitude object uh, frontwards through the image created. So uh, basically Basically, they put the more stress on some issue which could have gone not very specifically described. Or this can be the transfer of a slides of a set of attributes uh, the media associate with an attitude um, object frontward. So we will uh, put in front our understanding and our perspective of this or another case. Uh, so framing as a concept is commonly used to explain media effects on the more deep level. It is uh, frequently seen as an extension of the agenda setting theory, uh, which we all know stands for prioritization. So after this uh, prioritization, uh, we kind of stimulate the decision making process by highlighting some aspects of the news uh, in our particular case and eliminating the others. But how we can do frame the news? Uh, well, uh, as you can see at this quote, the central organizing idea for news content that supplies a context and suggests what the issue is uh, can be uh, made or provided through uh, four different approaches. Uh, the selection, the emphasis, exclusion, or elaboration. So the selection, well, this is the first level agenda setting. We select the news and we basically prioritize uh, the emphasis. We put more highlight on some issue and we would not do this to another one. Uh, exclusion stands for the exclusion of this uh, particular news from the agenda and the elaboration is uh, occurring when we provide a solid explanation for what is happening. So, Framing sometimes is referred to as scattered conceptualization. But what is it, framing? Uh, first of all, we can provide the definition of a particular problem. So we, as those who are influencing, we say what is happening. Um, for example, there is a river in our neighborhood and it's being polluted. Uh, we can speak about this problem quite differently. We can say that this is the uh, environmental problem. It can be seen as a very big environmental problem, or at the same time, it can be seen as a problem of the manufacturers who have their factory nearby and they just don't have funds or they don't have tools or they don't have any financial support to somehow change the way how they reduce this waste. 
Uh, the second uh, attitude towards framing or the second like uh, approach to framing can be the causal interpretation. So what is causing what? So I can say that this is pollution and uh, this is the problem in the local uh, neighborhood and it, the cause of this problem is the factory. Other way, I can say that the cause of this problem is our government, which does not support manufacturers. Well, this would be a different framing of the news. So it would be different perspective at the same, pretty much the same event. Moral evaluation or treatment recommendation. I can provide my own uh, personal feelings and I can, I can speak about whether it's ethical or not to do this or other issue. So uh, when the readers would go through this, uh, probably the readers with more empathy, uh, they would get my ideas and they will take them more personally. Or I can speak about the people, I can speak about the locals who are suffering from this water pollution. Uh, let's take a look at the classic example uh, how framing can actually happen and how it does influence us. Please take a look here. Uh, we have the case of 600 people suffering from the deadly illness. And in the first, in the first place, uh, people who would be the part of this experiment, they would be provided two solutions uh, for this problem. And there would be treatment A and tra treatment B. Uh, treatment A states that if we use this medication or the spills, we would save 200 lives. Treatment B provides us with the different outcomes. Uh, there would be 33% chance of saving all 600 people and 66% of chance that we're not saving anyone. Uh, then the same people would be, or maybe it's not the same people, it rather better be different people. Well, within this experiment, the next group was uh, suggested and provided with the solution number two. So the treatment A is 400 people will die uh, with the use of this medicine and uh, in treatment B uh, there would be the 33% chance that no people will die and 66% again that all of them will die. So what do you think would be most usually picked as solution number one and solution number two are exactly the same? Well, uh, in the situation number one, um, respondents would choose uh, the treatment number three as it sounds more positive, as more people would survive. And in the second case, uh, people would just try to keep uh, and tend for more possibilities, or at least some possibilities, because 400 people dying sounds just too scary. Okay, so now we know what framing is, and we this happens when we go to the public agenda and we see that some events in different media can be highlighted in a different way, can be seen in a different way. But how can we figure it out uh, what, what is the case and uh, how to deal with framing and how to identify the frames within this agenda as the second level agenda setting? Uh, here we provide you with a brief example, not the example, but the few steps of the frame analysis which can be conducted. Frame analysis, uh, uh, in the very beginning, it was uh, brought by Irving Goffman back in the 70s. So, uh, first of all, when we have something confusing and we have a suspicion that uh, there is some game played by different media uh, within the case, we first need to identify uh, the context of the case. So, what is going on? Secondly, we select several articles which describe this case and we structure the key plots of the case. So as Irving Goffman was very famous for his dramatic attitudes as uh, uh, to uh, what, what is going on within the communication, right? And uh, uh, here we need to understand like how this performance is played. So uh, what are the plots? What are the plots in this particular case? On the third step, we would outline three. Uh, uh, we would outline our main characters and their attributes. So, how these people—it can be people or a social institution—how they are characterized within these different plots. After all, we will distinguish the reasoning. So, what is the cause? So, who is the one to be blamed? That would be our number four step. 
And then we'd look at linguistic, cultural, and rhetorical mechanisms. Maybe uh, the authors uh, of uh, the particular articles would be somehow playing with words or they would provide uh, some more personal or uh, more, I don't know, uh, dramatic explanation for uh, the whole process. And if we go through all these five steps, later on we can compare and in this case we will be able to identify what are the particular frames which exist uh, in the point of view of the media outlet. We can call this media outlet. But uh, we don't have to forget that it is essential to recognize frames. But when uh, you... Uh, understand what the frames are. You need to know and you need to remember that you do have some frames in your own head and they are already embedded and it all comes with culture and the surrounding and with the context in which we exist. What is our profession? How do we, uh, attitude, uh, what kind of the attitudes do we have to life and to what is going on? So understanding the discourse and understanding what's going on within this issue is only possible when we understand how do we, at our uh, particular standpoint, will view the reality and what are our frames. So to summarize here, uh, we, during this lecture, discussed agenda setting theory and we discussed framing. Agenda setting theory stands uh, for uh, the notion that media would affect the audience, but they don't tell the audience what to think rather than what to think about. Still, uh, there is a little bit more as the second level agenda setting or framing, which actually says what to think to the audience from the point of view of a media. Uh, now, knowing about these mechanisms, probably we will be more critical to uh, our own media consumption and maybe the reading of the news would be different for us.